Hi, this is Ian Stewart from Flowtown Mastering, and in this video, I'd like to show you some of the improved editing features in WaveLab 12. First things first, the big news is that WaveLab is now supported as an ARA extension. So when you install the main application, the ARA VST3 will be installed right alongside it. This means you can now use nearly all of your favorite advanced editing features from the WaveLab audio editor environment right inside any DAW that supports VST3 ARA integration. Along the same lines of interoperability, copy and paste and drag and drop between WaveLab and other applications has been substantially enhanced. So now you can select an audio range, either in the montage or audio editor, and that is extended to the ARA audio editor. And then you can copy that range to the system clipboard, either with or without effects applied. Once the selection is copied, you'll notice two things happen. First, we get this yellow and black marching ants line around the selection. And second, in the edit tab of the ribbon, we get this little green waveform next to the clipboard caption. At this point, you can click on either of those to initiate a drag and drop of that audio range to virtually any destination on your computer that supports audio, including the Windows Explorer and Mac Finder. Additionally, while it's not quite as universal, the standard paste keyboard command will work in certain audio applications. So these first two features really give you some new and enhanced ways to work with audio between WaveLab and other audio applications. And then in addition, there have been several upgrades to the editing experience within WaveLab. So let's check those out too. First up is a new colorized rainbow waveform, which can be completely customized to your needs. Now, on the surface, this may just seem like some visual eye candy, but it can actually really speed up and enhance your workflow in many ways. So for example, if you're doing a transfer from tape, you could customize the rainbow view to quickly and easily spot the calibration tones. Or if you need to address some sibilance, you could customize a view to highlight those frequencies in a way that allows you to quickly and easily find the worst offenders. Of course, once you've set up a view, you can save it as a preset for quick future use. So essentially, anywhere you need to illustrate specific frequency features, this can be a really powerful tool. And lastly, we've got four smaller, but still significant editing improvements. To start, the crossfade behavior during the audio editor operations, like gain, cut, paste, mute, delete, etc., has been refined and can be easily toggled with this crossfading option. And you can also define the default fade length and shape in the global audio preferences. There are also some new magnet options, specifically for transient and release points, and these can be enabled and disabled independently in the montage and editor environments. So you can have them enabled in one, but not the other. And additionally, tab to transient support has been added. So combined, these new behaviors give you a few different ways to kind of speed up your editing workflow while still maintaining precision. The next two features are some visual enhancements. So first we have an automatic zoom to peak function that will automatically adjust the vertical zoom so that the waveform fills the display area. And this can be toggled on and off in either the montage or editor with this little button or the shift slash command or control up arrow key command. This is really useful for seeing more detail when you're zooming in and out to make edits or adjust envelopes or things of that nature without having to constantly manipulate the vertical zoom. And then lastly, there's a new navigation synchronization feature that allows you to keep the zoom, scroll, uh, edit cursor, and selection synchronized between distinct audio editor and montage windows, meaning you can include some and exclude others. This is really, really useful uh, for comparing different versions of a file, for example, a mix file alongside with a process master, or when jumping between the montage and editor environments. And while this tends to work best when you're working on items of the same length, there's not a strict requirement there, so this behavior can be very flexible. So those are the improved and new editing features in WaveLab 12. If this was helpful, we'd love it if you gave the video a like, and certainly take a look in the manual for more detail on all of these, as we're only able to kind of scratch the surface on some of them. 
Also, if you head on over to the WaveLab channel, we've got more videos on other new features in WaveLab 12, along with tutorials, the Pro Workflows live stream series with Justin Perkins, and all sorts of other good content for you to check out. So go ahead and subscribe, or if you'd like to be notified, you can ring the bell, and that way when new videos are available, you'll be the first to know. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.